Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at complex vector spaces. Now, there are various notations for vectors. Uh, the one I'll use in this course, which is particularly convenient for complex spaces, is what's called Dirac notation, denoting, denoting vectors like this. So this is some complex vector, which we can write out in full as elements 1, 2, 3, down to n, where n is the dimension of the space. And a particular convenience of the notation is that we write what's called the Hermitian conjugate of a vector, which is the complex conjugate transposed, uh, in the following form. So we do I... So in general, the Hermitian conjugate is indicated by a cross like this. Um, and by definition, this is the complex conjugate transposed. And we'll see in the problems that whether you date the complex conjugate first or the transpose first doesn't matter. And we denote this with a backwards um, angle bracket like this. So uh, it's called Dirac notation. Dirac himself referred to it as Braquet notation, which is uh, also sometimes used, where we define the following quantities. The uh, Hermitian conjugate of the vector is defined to be a bra, and the vector itself, a ket. So that together, when we put uh, a bra followed by a ket, we get a bracket, or bra ket. So the use of this is that this object naturally defines an inner product, a dot product between the vector and its, its Hermitian conjugate. So let's take a look at that on the next board. So we have the ket, or the vector, v, the bra, um, the Hermitian conjugate of v, and let's, um, let's define a bra u, which written out component-wise is as follows. That is, uh, we've taken the transpose, so a vector is uh, an n by 1 matrix, like this, uh, so its transpose must be a 1 by n matrix, so it has one row, and n entries, whereas this has n entries uh, within, um, sorry, uh, n rows uh, and one column. And so when we place uh, u to the left of v, we have the following. The sum of u n star v n, so the elements, we've taken the complex conjugate of this one, uh, and the result here must be a uh, one by one matrix, which is just a complex scalar. So the bracket forms complex scalars. So compare this to our usual, or, or the uh, perhaps more familiar vector notation, where we just underline, or we could use bold and, and so on. Um, but if we take uh, u dagger dot v, where d, v dot is the uh, dot product, or the inner product, uh, then we would also get this complex scale, we get the same thing. So that's all we're doing here, it's just a different notation. Uh, a particular convenience of this notation, though, is that if we want to look at the complex conjugate of this, so remember this thing, uh, bracket, is a complex number, a complex scalar. Uh, if we take the uh, uh, complex conjugate of that, uh, we just get the following. So the complex conjugate of u inner product v, or bracket uv, is equal to v inner product u. And you can just check this explicitly uh, in terms of the elements. So that's a, a nice convenience of this notation. Uh, this also tells us that if we take the inner product of v with itself, we must get uh, the sum over vn star vn, and that's nothing other than we just get uh, the norm of the vector v squared, where norm is just a slightly slight generalization on the uh, length of the vector. Uh, so this makes sense. If we take v dot v for, um, uh, for real vectors, we expect to get uh, the length squared of v, the modulus squared. Okay, so um, we have a complex vector space with an inner product on it, or a dot product, uh, and actually we have the following definition. So our definition, a complex linear vector space endowed with an inner product in which all vectors are normalizable uh, is an example of what's called a Hilbert space. So when we say that the vectors are normalizable, this just means that their uh, norm squared are all finite. So uh, this is the relevance of these complex vector spaces to quantum mechanics. Although we've dealt with wave functions so far, we'll see uh, in an upcoming video 
um, how those fit into this scheme. But in complete generality, we can say that quantum mechanics, the states in quantum mechanics, live in Hilbert spaces. Um, okay. All right, so let's take a look at matrices acting on our vectors. Okay, so if we have a matrix M acting on a vector U, in general, we expect to get uh, some other vector, let's call it V. M is an N by N matrix. Um, U, being a vector, must be an N by 1 matrix, and an N by N matrix acting on N by 1 matrix gives us an N by 1 matrix. We just cancel it out to the middle. And so this works out. So a matrix acting on a vector gives us another vector uh, in this complex space. So that's good news. Now consider the inner product. Let's take another vector, W, act it on M, U. Well, this thing must, by definition, then equal W in a product V, because MU is just V. Uh, and so this thing is a complex scalar. So that's also good news. Um, we can act matrices on our vectors, and we can take in our products, and everything works out as we'd expect. OK, so we've taken a look at the inner product, and we saw that, uh, so we write the uh, complex conjugate row vector here, conjugate transpose, uh, multiplied by the vector, gives us a complex scalar, which is the inner product. Uh, how about this object? So uh, I've just written the ket, V, on the left of the bra U. Well, this is an n by 1 matrix. This is a 1 by n matrix. And so the result, cancel the things in the middle, should be an n by n matrix. And it comes out as follows. So we have this vector to multiply, well, this matrix to multiply by this matrix. Um, n by 1 times 1 by n, we'll get an n by n, it looks like this. So it's an n by n matrix, where the first entry is v1, u1 star, second, well, uh, element 1, 2 is v1, u2 star, and so on. Uh, so this is what we call the outer product. Just as the inner product may be familiar uh, as the dot product between two vectors, the outer product may or may not be familiar as what's called the tensor product between two vectors. Okay, so these two objects are extremely useful in dealing with our complex vector spaces. Uh, let's take a look at some bases. So we can define an orthonormal basis as follows. It's the set of vectors which we'll call E subscript i, where i ranges from 1 to n in the n-dimensional space. Uh, and they're defined by the following fact. The uh, inner product between ei and ej, where remember this is defined as the uh, Hermitian conjugate of uh, vector ei, or cat EI. Uh, this inner product is the Kronecker delta, delta IJ, which is defined to be 0 if I doesn't equal J, and 1 if I does equal J. So we can, for example, uh, sandwich a matrix between two basis vectors, and we'll simply select out element IJ of the matrix. Similarly with vectors, we can take any vector we like and decompose it into any complete orthonormal basis, such as this, so, for example, we can write this. That is, we can write any vector um, as a sum over the basis vectors EI multiplied by coefficients, where VI is the projection of the vector V along the basis direction EI. So that's completely general, but then uh, if you think about how we, what we're saying this VI is, we want it to be the projection of vector V along direction EI. But in our Dirac notation, that's nothing other than the following. That is, VI is given by, uh, take the vector V, and we project it along the direction EI. Remember that an inner product is the projection of one vector along another. Uh, so another way to rewrite this, which looks even neater in direct notation, is this. That is, all I've brought, is, I've brought the ket EI over to the left. This, remember, is a complex scalar, so it can just pull through here. Um, and so you see that you have the outer product of EI with itself uh, acting on the vector V. Uh, just as a quick mention of notation, when I draw the outer product between, uh, say, u and v, really it's cat bra like this, but it's much easier to actually write it down as follows. Just in terms of how you actually write it, if you draw a cross, I, I think it's indistinguishable. But I'm not writing a cross here, I'm doing um, a cat followed by a bra. Okay. 
So um, in order to prove a very useful relation, uh, we need to use the following theorem. If we have two matrices, A and B, uh, and the inner product, or well, if A acts on V, and we take the inner product with U, and that thing is equal to U inner product B acting on V, for all U and V, arbitrarily, then that means that the matrix A is equal to the matrix B. This should hopefully make some intuitive sense. Um, so if we use this theorem, we can prove the following very nice result. Rewriting our vector V, written out in its basis EI, rewriting the vector V, projected into the basis EI, we can act from the left with some bra U, but between uh, the bra and the ket, we can always insert the identity matrix, because the identity ma matrix acting on any vector just gives the vector back again. So we can say this is completely equivalent to the following, where well, we've just inserted the identity matrix. But then that means that for arbitrary U and V, we haven't said anything about them so far, um, U in a product, the identity matrix acting on V, must equal um, this U in a product. Uh, let me take the U and V outside the sum here because they're not, uh, they don't have the index I on them. So for any U and V, we have that uh, one, the, the identity matrix sat between U and V, is equal to the sum of i equals 1 to n of the outer products of the basis vectors ei for an orthonormal basis. Um, and so therefore, from our theorem, we have the following result. The identity matrix is equal to uh, the sum from i equals 1 to n, the outer product of ei, where ei are the uh, basic basis vectors of a complete orthonormal basis. And this is called the resolution of the identity. And it's a, it's a very useful result. It's a simple result, but it turns out to be extremely useful in quantum mechanics. Let's just take a quick look at a, a very simple example. So for a, a two-dimensional vector space, we can take as our basis vectors these uh, vectors. We don't have to, of course, but this is a particularly simple choice. Uh, and note that this also works for a complex two-dimensional vector space, provided that we can uh, multiply these by uh, complex uh, uh, scalars, which we can. Um, and so we can form this object as follows. So the i just runs from 1 to 2 because it's a two-dimensional space. Um, and we just have e1 outer product e1 plus e2 outer product e2. And sticking in the uh, forms we have up here, we get this result. And multiplying these out, this is a 2 by 1 matrix times a 1 by 2 matrix. Uh, so it's going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. Same for that one. And we add those two matrices together to find which equals our two-dimensional uh, identity matrix, which is what we wanted to show. All right, thank you for your time.